What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Everyday Builds. If you've never been here before, the channel's dedicated to shop builds, shop improvements, and becoming a better woodworker overall. If this sounds like something that you're interested in, don't hesitate to hit that subscribe button. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I made these laminated work surfaces for my miter saw station. They're really great because they have this integrated combination track, which allows me to put a special stop in there that I'll talk about later in the video. But let's not waste any more time and let's get right into the build. Just wanna start off by saying that this is not a complicated build by any means. And if you're thinking about doing this yourself, you definitely should. It's essentially just layering materials to create a surface. So I start by creating what is the base layer for the worktop. And for this, I'm using three quarter inch MDF because it's really flat and cost effective. So I'm just doing a single cross cut to give me my length so that then I can rip it down the middle and get my two sides. And at this point, I'm not cutting it to its final dimension. Like I said, we're gonna be layering materials, so later on we'll trim it to its final dimensions. For the second layer of the worktop, I'm going with half inch MDF, and you'll see why in a second. So instead of two large pieces like the base layer, I'm cutting four individual pieces that will sandwich the combination track in between. Again, this will make more sense in a second. And here you can see how everything comes together. The half inch over the three quarter inch and how that half inch is the perfect depth to have that channel sit right in the middle. I told you it makes sense. But what the heck is this combination track even for? Some of you may be wondering, why am I putting this combination track in the surface? Well, it's great because it's got a T-track and a miter track. T-track has lots of uses. You could put hold downs in here. You could add a, a fence if you want. I really wanted it for this miter track here, which allows me to use these Woodpecker's Stealth Stops, which is a stop that you could flip up. And if you want to make a consistent cut from your blade to this point, you just butt your board up against this. But if you don't want to use it and you need to cut something longer, you just flip it down. It's completely out of the way. Ow! Now that I have all the core materials cut out, it's time to glue it together. And here I'm just making some lines because I don't want glue underneath where the combination track's gonna go. I only want it where the half inch and three quarter inch MDF are going to meet. Glue is definitely optional here. You don't have to glue these together. You could probably just use some screws. I do end up putting screws in this to act kind of as a clamp. Pro tip, use the combination track as your spacer when you're gluing this up because a physical reference is gonna be way better than trying to line it up with some line. And like I said earlier, I added a few screws just to apply some pressure while that glue dried. All right, it was kind of a lot of screws. And did the exact same thing on the other side. At this point, the bulk of the work surface is now assembled and it's time to get started on the edge banding. For this, I chose maple because it's a nice hardwood and it's relatively inexpensive. I started by breaking the piece down into smaller chunks for my side pieces, which then left me the perfect amount for my longer front pieces. Because this is rough lumber, it has no straight edges, so you have to create one. Typically, I would use my jointer to do this, but if you don't have a jointer, here's two methods for getting a straight edge with a table saw. This first method is called a straight line rip jig, and it just references the straight edge of the rip jig and then gives you a straight cut. On your board. The second method you see here just requires some sort of straight edge. It could be a level or a really straight board and you just run them through together and it transfers that straight edge onto your board. Once you have your straight edge you can now use that as the reference against the fence on your table saw to make your final cuts. I'm cutting these strips to be just slightly thicker than the two MDF layers that I just glued up. 
This will give me room to run it through the planer, and then I also want it to hang just a little bit below that base layer of MDF. I got all my edge banding pieces roughly cut out, but I didn't want to trim them to their final sizes until I did the final trim on the actual work surface. And I wanted to let that glue dry overnight, so this is where I called it a day. The next day I started by trimming the tops to their final size. I started with the front edge, so that way I could use it as a reference to square up each end. And I didn't have to trim the back edge, because when I did the glue up, I had everything pushed against a wall, so those were perfectly flush. As someone who contemplated getting a track saw for far too long, I must say that it is one of my favorite tools and probably the most versatile tool in my shop. And here you can see where I'm referencing that front edge to square up each end. I then spun the tops around and cut them to their final length. Wait, where did my hat go? I need a haircut. So at this point, the what I'm going to call the core of the worktops are done. All they require at this point is the finishing touches, which is edge banding and laminate. Oh yeah, remember when we cut up that maple? Well, it's time to clean that up and get it ready for edge banding. A quick trip through the planer and it'll be ready to go. Once the edges and faces were cleaned up with the planer, I then headed back over to the table saw to cut everything to their final length. So here was probably the most complicated part of the entire build. I needed to notch out a space on the edge banding for the combination track to sit flush with each end. I did this by first marking on each piece where that notch was going to be. I then went over to the table saw and made two cuts where the notch started and ended. And then I can come back and clear the rest of the material out with a router later on. Before I attached the edge banding, I flipped the top over so that it was top side down. This will help ensure that everything on the top side is perfectly flush. I attached the edge banding with a little bit of glue and some 18 gauge nails. I'm just doing simple butt joints and that's why I'm using that other board to act as a reference for how far forward those edge pieces come. Now it was time to route out the rest of that channel where the combination track is going to sit in. Just stay between the two relief cuts I already made and we'll be good to go. Those safety glasses would probably be much more effective on my actual eyeballs. And pretty quickly just like that, I cleared that right out and gave me a perfect channel. Now I just had to do all the rest of them. And look, I'm wearing safety glasses. And would you look at that, a perfect fit on that one. That was the best one. I messed up two of them. And now it's time to attach 
the track. And this track's really cool because it attaches from the bottom, so there will be no visible fasteners. It attaches with hex bolts. I think they're quarter by 20. So I need to drill holes in a straight line that line up with that bottom T-track. And sorry if you can hear a lawnmower in the background. My neighbor is mowing his lawn. But the show must go on. I measured these out about nine inches on center because I had eight for each side and that's just what it came out to. Test fit time. I like it. Installing laminate is pretty straightforward. It's make this thing sticky and make this other thing sticky and stick them together. To be a little bit more technical, it's the sticky stuff is called contact cement. And you spread it on both surfaces that you want to stick together and you let it dry for about 20 minutes. And after that, when the two surfaces now come in contact with each other, it will form a bond. For more porous surfaces like MDF, it says to put on an initial coat and let that dry for about 24 hours and then do your final coats and wait the 20 minutes. So that's what I'm doing here. I let these dry overnight and then came back the next day to apply the laminate. I moved the tops back to their final resting place so that I could use the assembly table to cut up the laminate sheet. They do make a specific tool for cutting a laminate, but I just use a sharp razor blade and score it a few times. Once it's scored, I like to bring it to the edge of something and fold it right on the line you scored. It will crack along that line that you scored, and then you simply bend it back the other way, and it pops right off. And then I just repeated that process until I had all my pieces. And sometimes you have to get up on your assembly table. Once I had all my laminate pieces cut out, I could then apply contact cement to the back of each piece. I don't think I mentioned this earlier, but I'm just using a six inch foam roller here to apply the contact cement. I then went back over to the work surfaces and applied a second coat. Once applied, I let the contact cement set up for about 20 minutes, and then it was time to apply the laminate. I do this by setting down a few sticks so that it keeps the laminate up off the surface. If it touches the surface, it will stick almost immediately. So by putting these sticks down, you can line everything up, slide out one at a time, and then evenly press everything down. Once I get the piece set, I then go back and roll it out with one of these rolling tools. And just a reminder that any tools you see in this video are linked down in the description below. And now I just repeat the process. And once you get the hang of this, it is really quite simple and honestly something I'm going to use a lot more in the future. I should also mention that I cut these a little bit oversized so that I can come back later and flush them up. To trim the laminate, I'm going to be using what's called a flush trim bit. Which is exactly what it sounds like it is. It trims things flush with other things. And right here you can see exactly how that works. This step is incredibly simple and even more satisfying. I mean, look at that. And 
And here's where I took it a step further. You could have stopped at that last step, but adding this 45 degree chamfer really just brings everything together. It makes it so that laminate edge really just melts into that maple edge banding. And all that was left to do at this point is give it a quick sand and then apply some finish. And here I'm just softening these laminate edges and be careful because this stuff can definitely cut you. And what would a woodworking YouTube video be without a little bit of Rubio Monaco? And I already know what you're gonna say, oh my god, this stuff's so expensive, why would you use it here? Well, for one, it's a tiny amount and I like it. So at this point, the top is basically done. All we have to do is slide the track in and secure everything from the bottom. The combination track that I'm using only comes in 48 inch lengths and I need about 65 inches total. So I have to cut some smaller pieces and then I'll just butt them together. And the good thing is aluminum is really easy to cut. And like I said earlier, this track is really easy to install. You just put in all your bolts and slide it in. A little snug, but I call that perfect. And here's another one of those, probably not totally necessary, but I milled up a little stick that fit perfectly into the bottom T-track so that it would keep the two pieces in alignment at all times. Once I had one in, it was really just rinse and repeat on the other side and it slid in perfectly. And this was the unfun part where I have to pull out all these cabinets and they're kind of already filled with things and I didn't want to have to take everything out so I just dealt with it so that I could secure the track from the bottom. You can see how those bolts come through and then I just thread on a nut and a washer which will keep that track nice and secure for probably ever. And while I was down there I also took the time to secure the entire top to the cabinet base by just running some screws up through the bottom. And as with every other step, I did the exact same thing on the other side. That's it. First thing, I want to give credit to Jason Hibbs at Bourbon Moth for kind of the inspiration behind this. He did his outfeed table, his top, very similar, almost exactly the same probably. I followed his thing almost to a T. Obviously, I added the track in, things like that. But thank you to him for putting out that video. It was very helpful. I'll post it down in the description below. And secondly, if you're interested in how I built the bases of these cabinets, Go check out my Instagram page. I put everything over there. There's a whole, there's a couple, a series of reels where I show kind of how I built all of this and where I got the cabinets from. They're from Facebook Marketplace, so they're kind of difficult to get. You have to be lucky to find them, but you can do this with really any kind of filing cabinet. I started by looking at lateral filing cabinets. Really anything like that works and you can get them really cheap. I built the entire base of all of this for like 500 bucks. And I didn't address kind of the middle of this where the miter saw sits now is not in the video. I just, this is very temporary. I just put in kind of some supports and a, a base. I want to do something more with this later on. I want to have dust collection more integrated and possibly even have it flipped down so that this can be out of the way and maybe make this a complete surface when I want to. And like I said in the beginning of the video, if this is the type of content you like, you know, shop improvement, shop builds, just getting better at woodworking overall, I'll probably mix in a little bit of home renovation stuff as well. Feel free to hit that subscribe button. I'm going to be putting out a lot of cool videos, got a lot of ideas, um, really just focused on getting better as a woodworker and sharing kind of that experience and, and what I learn along the way. So until next time, I'm Jordan. This is Everyday Builds. We'll see you in the next one.